First, a disclaimer. This is not a tutorial. This is the quick solution of this question for the sake of students who took the exam. This is the second part of the first question of the final exam. Students already solved the first part. Now, at t equals 0, switch A opens and switch B closes. With your answers for part A and B, previous video, the student has already found this current here in the inductor as being given by this expression of time and has found the voltage in the capacitor, this one, given by this other expression of time. Those are the findings of the previous part. With your answers from parts A and B, you can calculate the initial conditions in the inductor and in the capacitor using what was seen in class for second order circuits Determine the differential equation whose solution is the voltage in the capacitor, this one. After the switches operate, that is for T after zero. This opens, this source is not part of the circuit anymore. This closes, this source is. We solve that circuit. We want the differential equation that has Vc for its solution. How do we do that? As in class, We'll use heavy side P operator. We'll replace the inductor by its P operator in inductance LP and the capacitor by its P operator impedance, 1 over CP. We use a nodal analysis MNA to solve for this voltage reference node 1 KCL equation, solve for V1, simplify a little. Once we have V1, this one, we use voltage divider to obtain Vc, this one here. This is the voltage divider that's applied to V1. Replace V1 in that expression. Simplify. And down here, we have the voltage in the capacitor. Or rather, a differential equation whose solution is the voltage in the capacitor. If we write that equation using Leibniz notation, this is what we obtain, which is the answer to that question. Find the differential equation whose solution is Vc after the switch operates. The next part says, in this circuit, after t equals 0, is that circuit overdamped or underdamped? And we have to justify the answer. Well, now that we have a differential equation associated with a circuit, this one, we write the characteristic equation, find the eigenvalues, B1 and B2, observe that they are real and different, and can state with confidence that the circuit is overdamped for that reason. It has two real and different eigenvalues. The next part, how long do we have to wait after the switches operate for the circuit to reach steady state again? Observe I'm skipping part E for the end out of convenience. How long do we have to wait for the circuit to be in steady state? Well, once we have those uh, eigenvalues, we can find a time constant associated with each one of them. And we know how. One of the time constants is 2.5 milliseconds. The other is 285 milliseconds. The largest of the two, multiply times 5, gives us the time we'd need to wait for the circuit to be in steady state again, 14.26 milliseconds. Now the last part, part T, the remaining one. For T after 0, the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time is required. We need to find Vc of T after the switches operate. We begin by finding the initial conditions of the, of the circuit. We find the initial condition in this inductor, IL0, and the initial condition in this capacitor, Vc0. How? From the formulas we obtained in parts A and B, of the problem in the previous video. We have those expressions, we evaluate them at t equals 0, like so. 
this is IL0 and this is VC0. And then we have two options. We can work with them to find out what is VC of T as required, but there is a little footnote call here that says, as an alternative, which is valid for full marks to this part, you can instead draw the complete Laplace domain circuit including the initial condition sources that you would need to solve and obtain for VCS and eventually VCT. Hmm. Let's do it this way, which is easier first, and then we will do it the hard way. The Laplace domain equivalent circuit would be uh, this one. We have replaced the inductor, L, uh, by its impedance, LS, this one, and by the initial condition source, LIL0. We know what is IL0, so we can compute LIL0 as being negative 0 0.106. That is the value of this source. And the capacitor is replaced by this equivalent circuit, the impedance of the capacitor, 1 over Cs, and Vc0 over S. Vc0 was previously computed, so that source is negative 28 over S, and that is the solution to that part. That is all that was needed. But before we say goodbye, let's suppose that you chose not to take advantage of that footnote. No, no. You said, I'm going to do that the hard way. Well, let's do it the hard way. We take the initial conditions, IL0 and VC0, and we draw the circuit as a snapshot right after the switches operate at t equals 0 plus. Here is the the inductor is represented as a current source with the initial condition, which of course was negative pointing to the right. That's why I drew that positive pointing to the left. At the same can be said of the capacitor. It is represented by a voltage source with the initial condition. We show that circuit to find what is the current in the capacitor at t equals 0 plus. We solve the circuit, the usual stuff, KCL, solve for this one, determine the current. What we want is this current, right? The current in the capacitor, negative 0 0.625 amps. And what we do with that? We know that if we divide that current by the capacitance, we obtain what is the initial derivative of the voltage in the capacitor with respect to time, negative 750 volts per se. Well, that's great. But we also need the final value of the voltage in the capacitor. Well, for that, let's go directly to the original circuit. Uh, remember, this part is not there anymore, and this is closed. In steady state, in DC steady state, this would behave as a wire. This is an open circuit so that the final value of the voltage in the capacitor will be given by this voltage divider 3, 4 of 7 volts will be 7 times 3 over 4 plus 3, 7. That is 3 volts. That is the final value of the voltage in the capacitor written here the final value, 3 volts. With that uh, final value, with the initial voltage in the capacitor that we obtained before, and with this initial uh, rate of change of the voltage in the capacitor, we can solve for the constants of integration K1 and K2. And this is the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time. Thank you very much.